Hello, this is Brian again. Welcome to part two of Kwai Pai. So, been hiking a little bit up. We're in the chaparral now. Got chemise over here. Adenosum fasciculatum, very fasciculatum. Of course, summer dormant black sage, salvia mellifera. And we'll be into a nice population of Mission Manzanita. Silococcus bicolor. So, a couple of huge Mission Manzanitas over here, actually. Here's a tall, here's a tall black sage too. Moving into a very mature stand of chaparral over here. It's actually kind of nice. When you start on the trail, you're hiking in coastal sage scrub. When you start climbing a little ways up the ridge start getting chaparral shrubs popping in. Very nice. Of course, Malosma Lorena, good old Laurel Sumac. There's a lot of Mission Manzanita over here. A lot of it. Chaparral yucca, Hespro yucca whippily has entered the chat. Saw to the golden bush. It's already a squarosa. Probably variety Grindelioides, I would imagine. For an air temperature that's relatively cool, I am drenched in sweat. I'll be honest with you. Actually, if you want to think about it, a lot of what makes the air feel muggy in a lot of cases, of course, relative humidity, the amount of moisture in the air, obviously has a big part of it, but one of the major factors is actually the temperature of the water vapor, the dew point. Whoa! The temperature of the water vapor has a huge effect on how it feels. And I would say the dew point probably is in at least the mid-60s. So once you get dew points into the 60s, the air starts feeling muggier. Once you get into the dew points towards the 70s, it's just downright steamy. I'd say our dew point's probably in the mid 60s. I was watching the weather yesterday, and Borrego Springs yesterday had a dew point in the 70s. Now, interestingly enough, higher dew points and higher humidities sometimes work to temper the temperature, the actual air temperature. I always read that on National Weather Service pages that the summer monsoon moisture that comes out of the Gulf of Mexico. will keep the temperatures lower 
in the deserts. Obviously, especially with cloud cover, but even with more just more humidity, the high temperatures won't get as high the actual air temperatures. But it's all relative because the dew point in the air will make it feel really uncomfortably sweaty and humid. And when it's when the dew point's high, it's hard for evaporative cooling to take effect. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. It's, I'm sweating, but I don't feel a major cooling effect. So I'm sweating profusely right now, which is trying to make up for the lack of evaporative cooling. Believe it or not. I mean, <laughs> like I said, ooh, hey, look at that. Beautiful little Audubon's cottontail. Sorry about that. You know me, I see wildlife, you know I'm gonna break my train of thought. But when it's humid, your body is trying to produce more sweat to counteract the lack of evaporative cooling, so your body sweats more. So in very humid weather, it's always good to carry more water. And for this short hike, I have quite a bit with me. Got more than a half a gallon. Actually, I got more than three quarters of a gallon for this hike. Manzanita up here? Wow. I didn't think Arctostaphylus grew down here. Yeah. Could be a subspecies of Eastwood Manzanita. I think that's Arctostaphylus glandulosa something. Now, some places you can tell what subspecies it is of, of Arctostaphylus glandulosa the Eastwood Manzanita because it might be the only subspecies growing there. San Diego County there are quite a few subspecies of Eastwood Manzanita so it would take a little more of an acute awareness of the differences in each subspecies to nail it down and I haven't come quite that far in my Manzanitas like, when I was hiking in the Santa Ana Mountains, I knew it was the typical Eastwood Manzanita, Arctostaphylos glandulosa, subspecies glandulosa. That was not an issue for me. I could tell what it was. It's the only subspecies that grows in the Santa Ana range. Look at this Mission Manzanita, though. Look at that. Wow. Some big ones here. But yeah. So, I definitely still struggle with my manzanitas quite a bit. Uh, now this part's really steep here. Wow, oh boy. Put these steps here to, to help, but when the soil erodes from underneath them, Make stepping on them even harder. Sometimes it's sometimes I think it's best just to have the soil. I just look better. After a while, the soil erodes, and then these steps actually become more challenging to to climb. Catch my breath. It's getting hella steep over here. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So we've got Ceanothus tomentosus over here. Oh boy. Yeah, see? 
you have to put a lot more effort into stepping where the soil has rutted out underneath the step. Sometimes I find it's just better to walk on the dirt instead of trying to climb up the Stairmaster. It's supposed to be a big Stairmaster set going up the south flank of South Fortuna Mountain, which is also here in Mission Trails. Not super far from here, actually. It's across Mission Gorge. Actually, I honestly find it more laborious going over these steps. Ooh, hey. It's pretty high though, I'll tell you that. Beautiful over here. Catch my breath for a minute. I have a feeling at the summit I'm going to be in the clouds. So one of my panning views might not really be feasible today. <laughs> this is a very low cloud deck. Oh, more steps. Lovely. Well, I'm going to go sit down for a minute and get a sip of water. The last clip, I should be able to get to the summit by then. I'll see you on clip number three of Kwai Pai Peak here in beautiful Mission Trails.